Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, I'm gonna show you the three foods that will speed up your metabolism. Here we go, three foods, I'm keep it simple. So the first food, ready? That will speed up your metabolism is protein. Okay, let me go into the nuance, why protein? So when we look at what we call the macronutrients, there are three macronutrients. There are carbohydrates, there are fat, and there's protein. They each do something very different to your blood sugar. When you eat one of those macronutrients that shall not be named, but it begins with a C, it, when it, you eat that, it spikes your blood sugar too high, and as high as your blood sugar goes up, it goes crashing down. Whereas protein, what protein does is a stabilizer of blood sugar. When you eat a protein rich meal, what's gonna happen is that you're gonna notice you're not gonna want that next meal as quickly. How cool is that? Second thing that protein does is it's rich in amino acids. Now your cells, you've got 72 trillion cells in your body and each one of these cells is sensing nutrients coming in and out of it. And if you are low in amino acids, it will trigger hunger. So we don't want that cell to sense that your amino acid levels are going down. So protein is amazing. It is the go-to, it should be the go-to for so many of you. Um, it will make it so that it's easier to go in and out of this uh, fat burner, sugar burner. It will speed up the metabolism and it'll kill hunger. It's like the greatest macronutrient out there. Speaking of good macronutrients, the second one I wanna talk about, the second food you should be eating to boost your metabolism and get your metabolism higher is fat. Hmm? Yes, you need to eat fat to burn fat. You've got to get good fat into your diet and let me tell you why. Every time you eat fat, you go up and you kill hunger. So why is that important is because if you're eating all day, you're doing the six meals a day, you're just eating randomly, not even thinking about it, what can happen is that you can start to spike your hunger. That sucks. So if we eat fat and we stabilize our blood sugar, we're eating more fat, we kill that hunger hormone and your brain isn't constantly looking for the next food. Second thing about fat that's really powerful is it just keeps your blood sugar stable. So protein is going to really have this little blurb, like a little bit of a blurb in your blood sugar. Fat is like nothing. Like there's, your body barely registers that that blood sugar goes up. So you kill the hunger hormone, you feel amazing, and you are elongating that time period to the next meal. Okay, last food, third food, probiotic rich foods. What? Yeah, I know, we're back at the sauerkrauts and the kimchis, the kefirs, and if you don't like those foods, eat them anyways. So, so much of what we've talked about metabolism has been about our human cells, but you're 10 times more bacteria than you are actual human cells. So this metabolic switching I keep talking about, going in and out, it requires a healthy microbiome. So we gotta add in some probiotic rich foods, the sauerkrauts, the kimchi, the kefirs, the kombuchas, those kind of things are adding good bacteria into your gut so that those bacteria can regulate your blood sugar. So when we add probiotic rich foods back in, we feed those little gut bacteria and what ends up happening is we stop craving the harmful foods. So this is what I told a set of doctors this weekend, which is, it's funny how when we were in college, we would take a shot of tequila, no problem, to have an effect on our brain, but then we grow up and I'm, you're watching a YouTube video like this, and I say, hey, you should have some sauerkraut, and you're like, yeah, I don't really like sauerkraut. I'm gonna tell you that eat it anyways. I don't care. I want you to love the body that you're living in, so if you have to muscle through a cup of sauerkraut every day so that you can feed those bacteria, get good bacteria in there to spike your metabolism, let's do it. Let's do what's right for the body so you can love living in the body that you are walking around it. So 
make sure you're getting your probiotic rich food. The six worst foods you can eat if you're trying to lose weight. I've broken them down into three categories and I put them in the exact order I want you to start to peck away at and to avoid. Okay, so the first one, these are the musts. There is no ands, ifs, or buts about these. You have got to get these foods out of your diet like today. So the first one are bad oils. These are your canola, your corn, your cottonseed, your soybean, your partially hydrogenated, your vegetable oils, safflower, sunflower oils. I've done videos on these oils, but these inflammatory oils you've got to get out. Okay, second thing is the refined flours. These are man-made, these refined flours. So they are, even if they're gluten-free, this is your cakes, your cookies, your pastas, your breads, your tortillas, all of that refined flours typically will spike your blood sugar. And those are the ones you absolutely want to get rid of because if your blood sugar goes up, your body's not burning fat. So if you wanna lose weight, the name of the game is to bring your blood sugar down. The third must is any toxic ingredient. So this is your artificial colorings. This is your monosodium glutamate. This is your nitrites, your sodium nitrites, your red dyes. When you look at an ingredient label, if you cannot pronounce the word, it is an artificial ingredient. It was made by man and it will slow down your weight loss results. The one artificial ingredient that really trips up dieters is NutraSweet. So NutraSweet is an artificial ingredient. It was made by man. There's no NutraSweet trees as far as I know. And it will absolutely make you more hungry and more insulin resistant. So avoid those. If you have it, by the way, if, you, if you're like, whoa, psh, I have, that's a lot right there. Don't listen to the rest of this video. But if you have done that, let's move to the next step. The next one is what I call highly suggested, which means if you and I are standing at line at the grocery store and you say, how do I lose weight? I would tell you the three I just said, and then I would tell you these three. So, and what's interesting about these three is their drinks. And this trips up fasters a lot because we don't tend to think of drinks as being something that's gonna pull us out of a fasted state. So alcohol, Okay, here's the deal with alcohol. Even you guys know I'm a fan of dry farm wines, even dry farm wines, if you're trying to lose weight. As long as alcohol is in your body, your liver is not burning fat. If you are struggling to lose weight, you cannot drink and burn fat at the same time. Bottom line. So you are gonna wanna make sure to avoid alcohol. Juices. I used to be a big juicer. I have like juicers in my kitchen still that I rarely use anymore because many times juice has too much sugar in it. We lean too much into the fruits in juices. So uh, there's this misconception that orange juice is a health food. It is not a health food. Orange juice is a sugar bomb. It's as bad as a Coke to your weight loss efforts and to your metabolic, overall metabolic health. Even green juice, when we look at green juices, I know for me, when I go to a, a restaurant or I go to like a cafe to order a juice, I always will get a green juice without any fruit in it. It'll be all vegetables, not as tasty, I realize. The reason I do that is I don't want my blood sugar to spike. If you wanna lose weight, get all juices out. I would even get coconut water out and make sure the alcohol goes out. Okay, last drink that I highly recommend you avoid are the soda and the diet sodas. So you can't, you can't drink Coke and lose weight, sorry. And you, you may find you can't drink Diet Coke and lose weight because of the NutraSweet effect, where NutraSweet is causing insulin resistant, resistance and it stimulates the flipping hunger hormone in your brain. So you drink a Diet Coke, a Diet Pepsi, whatever, you know, anything with NutraSweet in it, you think you're doing a great job, you're in your 15 hour fasting window, and all of a sudden an hour later you're hungry, your body's in insulin resistance, you do this day after day, and you're gonna start to get really frustrated with your fasting lifestyle, and you're gonna think fasting doesn't work for you. Fasting works for everybody, but when you start to put a diet soda into your fasting window, it, may not, it might not work for you anymore. Okay, that's the highly suggested. 
Now let's go to possibly. Yeah, you might want to think about these 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 two foods because they may be slowing down your weight loss efforts. The first one is fruits. Now here's the tricky part about fruits is that not all fruits are made equal. Tropical fruits, we love them for building progesterone. We don't love them for weight loss. They are highest on the glycemic index. Berries, berries are the lowest on the glycemic index. So I often, when I'm working with somebody, I often will make sure that if they have a sugar craving, if they are doing fruits, that we just come all the way down to the berries and we start to limit it to berries and maybe even green apples because those are lower on the glycemic index. But if you're one of those people where you're like, I'm doing everything, I'm not losing weight, it may be time to get rid of the fruits. Okay, second thing, the starchier, starchier carbs. I just found my own typo here. Start to your carbs. So these are your potatoes, your squashes, your beans, your quinoa. Um, those are going to be starchier. And yes, they're progesterone building. So those of you that have been following me for a while I might be confused right now. But they, the reason that we use these carbs the week before our period for women is because we are actually made that week to bring our glucose up. But the other three weeks, we're not made to bring our glucose up. So we want to bring the, take those carbs out. So as long as it's not the week before your period, then, or you're a man, then you want to make sure that you are eliminating those starchier carbs. So there you go. The three steps that I want you to take if you're trying to lose weight, you can pair these three habits with any of the six different fasts that I teach you. But I wanted to bring this to you guys because I see your comments and so many of you are succeeding and then some of you are frustrated. And I want to make sure that if you're frustrated, let's create some checklists here. Let's make sure that you're not doing these things because they may be affecting your weight loss efforts. Three foods that can absolutely help with depression and anxiety. And we want to pair these, as always, with a fasting lifestyle. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, three keto foods. Yeah, food categories. They're not exactly foods. There's going to be more than three, but I wanted to break them down into something very, very simple for you. So here are the three categories. Let's start with them. The, the first concept I want to make sure you get, because if you're new to my channel, you haven't heard my teachings before, I hope you know that in order to get better mental health, we have to have better gut health. So just because we are humans doesn't mean that everything that, that goes on in the brain is human dependent. We need good bacteria to make us neurotransmitters. And these neurotransmitters are like dopamine and serotonin and GABA are some of my favorite. And those neurotransmitters really help with depression and anxiety. Go watch the video before it. I explain and I show you a picture of the neurotransmitters and how it works. So when we look at trying to use food to improve depression and anxiety, we've got to lean into these three categories of food because they feed the bacteria in the gut that will now create neurotransmitters. And those neurotransmitters will make their way up the vagus nerve from your gut up into your brain. And they will help give you feelings of joy and calm the brain so that you can feel your best. So here are the three categories. The first is probiotic rich foods. So to me, probiotic rich foods are anything that's fermented. Although having said that, not all fermented foods are made equal. So m some of the easiest fermented foods to get in are yogurts. So, but these are, we want to go for things like, I hope you all have heard me say before, like cocoa yo is a great one. Even some like organic raw yogurts. We want to make sure that they haven't been overly pasteurized because the pasteurization process will kill those enzymes and those bacteria. Second in the yogurt category, food that I like to look at is kefir. Raw kefir specifically. This is not the kefir you go to your store and it has a lot of sugar in it. Really like raw farm is my favorite. I'll put links in the, in the um, notes below so you can find those. But what we love about kefir is trillions, trillions, trillions of good bacteria in raw kefir. Of all the fermented foods, it's some of the best. 
Okay, third category, whether you like it or not, is sauerkraut. So sauerkraut not only has a lot of probiotics in it, but you'll see it here in a moment, it has a lot of polyphenols in it. It also is an incredible way when you ferment cabbage, you can take out the lectins and the oxalates. Those of you that are worried more about the, uh, those plant toxins, fermentation takes that out. So sauerkraut, amazing. Another great one. I will tell you in my home, we probably have a cup of sauerkraut almost every day, goes with almost every meal, and we're always doing different sauerkrauts so that we can really enhance our microbiome so we can not only get better physical health, but better mental health. The last one in the, in the probiotic category that a lot of people have asked me is what about kombucha? I love kombucha. You got to watch for the sugar in it. It's not always a keto food. And it's a very, very weak probiotic. There's not a lot in there, maybe a small amount. So it's great for taste, it's better than a soda, but it's really not enhancing your bacterial diversity by a large amount. So I just wanna point that out. Okay, second set of foods that we're gonna lean into are prebiotic foods. So probiotic foods are putting good bacteria into your gut. Prebiotic foods are feeding those bacteria. So it's like buying a pet, you bring the pet home, you're so excited about this new pet, let's call it, let's say it's like a hamster, you're so excited, you wouldn't just leave the hamster there to, and not feed it. That's the same thing with our gut. You put all this good fermented foods in it, but then if you don't feed those, those good bacteria, they're gonna die. So prebiotic fibers are super simple, get fiber. Anything fiber rich is going to be a prebiotic, have a prebiotic benefit for all of those good bacteria that you put in with the probiotic foods. So some of my favorites, all kinds of veggies, all kinds of veggies is super important, but raw nuts, raw seeds are great prebiotic foods. I do a lot of hemp seeds on my salads. I do chia seeds, flax seeds. I eat raw nuts during the day. Um, I do Andrea seed oils, which we'll put links for in the notes. Um, so, and then I try to eat as many veggies as I can. And when my fasting window is very short, I'll lean into products like Organifi's green juice that has these prebiotic fibers or I'll do their balance. So I'll add it in through supplementation when I find that my eating window is much shorter and I can't get enough in. So for, for you expert fasters, I wanted to make that side note. Okay, third thing, polyphenol foods. So here's what's cool about polyphenol foods is that A, they're yummy. So these are foods that are anything that are rich in antioxidants. So they're yummy and they're everywhere. So, and some of them you actually may not even, you're doing and you may not even realize. My absolute favorite, like because it's easy and I can pop it in my mouth all day long are olives. So you wanna make sure, like if you w went into my refrigerator right now, we have next to the sauerkraut, we have jars and jars and jars of olives. So always coming in with different olives. Okay, you, you, this isn't a typo. Yep, it says chocolate right there. Chocolate is also an incredible polyphenol food. But not, but not all chocolate. So you wanna get the darker chocolate. You don't wanna get the refined processed chocolate. You want something that's a real dark, like 70, 80% chocolate that's gonna have more polyphenols. You want it to be organic and you want the sugar content to be very, very low. Okay, other great polyphenol foods, this is not a typo either, is wine. But not every wine. So you guys hopefully know I'm a fan of Dry Farm Wines because they have tested all of the chemicals in wine. And so these are low sugar, so it makes them more keto. There's no sugar added. And they're from all over the world. And they are, there are natural yeasts in here. They're, they have been raised naturally. So they actually have a microbiome benefit and because they're high in polyphenols, they will feed those bacteria that are there that you can grow to make the neurotransmitters you need to be happy. Now, of course, everything in moderation, I just wanna point the, that out. If you wanna know how to find Dry Farm Wines, I will put a link in the, in the notes so that you can go find Dry Farm Wines because I, when I drink wine, I'm not drinking any wine, I'm drinking Dry Farm Wines because I want it to be clean. 
Okay, the other thing that I'll tell you on the on the polyphenol foods is beans are great, spices are great. Those can all be beneficial. So three major categories, your probiotic, your prebiotic, and your polyphenol. You can use them to really enhance neurotransmitter production. You're feeding those bacteria. When you feed those bacteria, they come back and they make these neurotransmitters. Those neurotransmitters crawl up the vagus nerve to your brain and they help you feel relaxed, calm, joyful, and hopefully give you the best that life can offer. It's, it's that simple when we are trying to build a fasting lifestyle. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free and it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool. And it's gonna show you how to break your fast among many other things. All you gotta do is click on this link right here and enjoy. You want to be able to vary your fast, but go into those lengths that repair the neurons. And then when you eat, you wanna lean into these foods. They're gonna help with the neurotransmitter production. So I made these two videos to really go together for those of you that are struggling with mental health. And I also wanna just point out, these are foundational. This should be the foundation in which you build a mentally healthy lifestyle. And they are a part of a multi-therapeutic approach. There are a lot of reasons why our brains start to go in depressive and anxious states. So this is foundational work. And as always, you may have to add in other therapies, but those of you who've already done the other therapies and haven't done this foundational work, this is key. I'm gonna break down five categories of foods that if you're deficient in these foods, you're vulnerable to infection. But if you eat a lot of these foods and you bring these different food groups up, you're gonna have an amazing immune response. There are some foods that you can be adding into your diet right now that are gonna have a massive effect on your immune system. And there are also are some nutrients that if you are missing these nutrients and you're not not eating these foods, you're going to be more susceptible to infections, specifically viral infections. So what I want to do is I'm going to go through five different categories of foods. So there's actually more than just five foods. We're going to go through five major categories of foods that you need to be keeping your focus on so that you can keep your immune system at its best. And let me start off by just saying this. I explained this to my academy members earlier today uh, in one of our Q&A calls. We have two types of immune system. So we have an innate immune system that identifies viruses and pathogens and bacteria, and we have an adaptive immune system. So if you have been following me at all, um, you know, I've talked about the sun, I've talked about exercise, I talked about lowering stress, all of those can be really good for your adaptive immune system. They are, they are there and the adaptive immune system, I'll explain in a moment, is like that army that goes out and finds the viruses and grabs onto them and gets rid of them. But where we can lean into food and what can really help us when we have a good healthy gut, when we're getting a good variety of vegetables and fruits that I'll talk about specifically here, when we lean into really good quality foods, what we're doing is we're stimulating our innate immune system. Uh, maybe you come in contact with the flu, whatever virus it is, it is your innate immune system that is going to identify it and go, wait a second, there's a foreign invader here. This is not, uh, this should not be in our environment. And it is going to orchestrate an immune response. And that immune response usually will happen within the first few days. In, in uh, clinical terms, this is like neutrophils, this is macrophages. These are your immunity that tags it and says not good. And it creates something called cytokines. And cytokines are also known as like an inflammatory reaction where cytokines go out and they start to tag your uh, T cells and your B cells and, and orchestrate an army to go after that virus. So we want this innate immune system to be really, really smart. And this is where we can use food. And we want it to stimulate the cytokines and then we want it to go off and stimulate the T cells and the B cells, which are in your adaptive immunity. 
So a lot of things like fasting, all that, that can be over here adaptive, but food is over here in innate immunity. Let's use our the, these foods I'm about to go through to stimulate innate immunity. So your immune system is gonna be like, I'm on it, identified it, this is not right. Send it on to the adaptive immune system so you can orchestrate a proper response, okay? So there are five categories of foods that I want you to focus on. First category, and I talk about this a lot. The other categories I don't as much, but on this category I t um, that I really want you to look at are fermented foods. What we know about kimchi is that fermented onions and fermented ginger, especially green onions and ginger, and some of the spices used in kimchi, kimchi will stimulate a bacteria called Lactobacillus plantarium. That is specifically will or orchestrate in a viral immune response. It will help to orchestrate the adaptive immune system that goes after viruses. So we like that. We, I want you eating a lot of kimchi. Some of you guys have posted pictures of you eating kimchi on my Instagram, and I love it. If you, if you dive into the fermented foods, send me pictures, post it on the community here, come find me on Instagram and post them there, where, wherever. I love hearing that we're creating a fermented food movement. The second fermented food that I really want you to lean into is sauerkraut. And let me tell you why. Um, sauerkraut, not only is it gonna add some of these good probiotics in that will support this adaptive immune system, but it's got vitamin C, it's high in vitamin C, which will help with the innate immune system. So in our household right now, I'm making green salads every night for my family, and I'm pouring sauerkraut in them so that I can, def you know, I have a 17-year-old son at home right now. He's not super excited about a cup of sauerkraut placed in front of him, but if I put it and sprinkle it throughout a green salad, I don't tend to get as many complaints. But we all should be doing fermented food every single day, okay? So that's, the, that's my first food group that is gonna help boost your immunity, okay? Second food group is vitamin C rich foods, okay? So now, here's what I want you to know about vitamin C. So vitamin C, if you are deficient in vitamin C, and I'm gonna link the studies here, you, you know how I like the studies, so I'll link the studies in here. If you are deficient in vitamin C, it will result in an impaired immune system. Well, one thing we know is if you're deficient in vitamin C that your innate immunity isn't gonna be as Johnny on the spot when it comes in contact with viruses. So we wanna make sure that you're keeping your uh, vitamin C levels at their highest. We also know that when you have a good amount of vitamin C, when you're mega dosing with vitamin C, that you're specifically uh, um, stimulating the neutrophils over here in the innate response, and you're enhancing what they call phagocytosis or chemotaxis, which is where those cells will go out and they get this army over here, this adaptive army, to go over and start to grab on and, 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 and kill chemotaxis. Is, let's get in there and chemically kill those viruses so they die off. This is why we love vitamin C. Okay, so where do you get vitamin C? Well, the obvious ones that we know about are citrus fruits. Um, for those of us that love the ketogenic lifestyle, it gets a little bit confusing because we've been staying away from those kind of fruits. And what I wanna tell you is that there are two ways to get into ketosis. One of them is through fasting, and one of them is through food. When you do eat, let's get you into some of these foods like oranges and grapefruits. And yeah, we'll pull you out of ketosis for a moment, but then you can go back into ketosis the next day. So with your fasting lifestyle. So here are the ones, citrus fruits. Um, some of you are gonna ask me about orange juice and things like that. You'll never hear me talk about doing orange uh, juices. I just don't think juices is a, uh, it's too much sugar. So that is not what I'm encouraging you to do. But like an orange, grapefruit's really great for estrogen. Um, so lean into some of your citrus fruits now. I can tell you in my household, we're cutting up oranges, putting them in front of everybody. And when we are eating, we're eating a lot of oranges. Okay, other vitamin C rich foods. Kiwi fruit, so if you have access to that, and strawberries. Those are the, those, so citrus fruits, kiwi fruits, and strawberries are, are in the fruit category. But then when we come over to the vegetable category, we have things like red and green uh, pe uh, peppers. So that's very available for a lot of people right now. Can you go and start eating, and you can eat those raw. Cut them up, get the red, the yellow, the orange, green, and, and get yourself a pepper medley. If you can do it raw, that, that would be the best. And then broccoli. So um, broccoli is, you'll see, 
comes across in many of the food groups here that I'm recommending you eat that you eat from. Uh, when you go to steam broccoli, what I want to encourage you to do is not just steam the heck out of it because you'll kill all the nutrients in there. So can you just lightly steam it so it's a little softer, um, but you're not totally taking all of the vitamin C out of it, okay? So that's vitamin C. Third group of foods that I want you to focus on are vitamin E rich foods. Okay, so we're back at this issue when you look at the science that people that are deficient in vitamin E and deficient in selenium have, and, I, and again, I'm gonna put this article in there for you, but they have, an, an, um, when they're deficient, they will be deficient in their um, altered immune response. So what does that mean? That there is a altered response over here in the innate immunity. So here are the fids, and I'll just kind of, there's a list here, so I'll just ramble them off. Cashews, Chickpeas and lentils. So this is where you can lean in with vitamin E into more of your beans. Uh, Grass-fed uh, meat, uh, eggs, and then there's a list of seeds. And you, if you've been following me for a while, you probably know that I'm a big seed and nut fan. I really like your seeds. I like everything to be organic, but especially seeds and nuts, and I want them raw. I don't want them roasted or that you kill a lot of these nutrients, even dry roasted. So um, hemp seeds, flax seeds, Pumpkin seeds, squash seeds, these are all crucial for bringing your vitamin E and selenium up. Okay, fourth group, glutathione boosting foods. So I'm gonna tell you what I told my academy members today. Those of you that have been fasting with us, you this is the moment that you have been preparing for because your mitochondria are healthy and those mitochondria make glutathione. And glutathione is the ultimate, ultimate anti antioxidant. So we want you to be able to naturally make it. If you can't fast, you're one of those people that struggle with fasting and you can't get yourself into a metabolically flexible state, then we know your mitochondria are sick. Go back and watch the very first Resetter TV I ever did with Nasha Winters. She talks about how cancer forms in a body that can't go without food. It's those because those mitochondria are sick. So if you struggle to fast, what that tells me is those mitochondria aren't working right. If they're not working right, they're not producing glutathione. If they're not producing glutathione, then the virus can come in and can take over that cell and it can, it can be a, a, an immune compromised situation for you, okay? So here are the glutathione boosting foods that I want you to eat. Number one, avocado. We love avocado. That's like a keto practitioner's dream. Hopefully you are bathing in avocado. I always tell people to bathe in sauerkraut as well, but I want you doing avocado, garlic. I want you doing cabbage. So this is glutathione building. If you do sauerkraut, you're getting the fermented probiotics plus the cabbage. It's a double whammy of, of vitamin C, probiotics, and, um, and uh, glutathione. Love that. Uh, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, and spinach. Now, as much of this is raw is the best, um, but you want to be building up your glutathione levels right now so that you can help with detoxification inside the cell so that cell is better equipped to handle viruses when it gets attacked. Again, I'll put the science in there. Okay, last category, vitamin A rich foods. There's a ton of great research out there about vitamin A, and the, I'm gonna link a study in, in here to show you that what they're finding is that vitamin A plays a major role in immunity, specifically in this cytokine response that I talked about, that once the innate immune system actually identifies it, um, the cytokine that goes, response that goes out and it, it orchestrates the T and B helpers to go and, and the army of, vi of immune pieces that will go off and fight viruses. So vitamin A helps with that, that movement from the innate immune system over to the adaptive immune system and it creates this positive cytokine response. Now there can be a really bad cytokine response too, but that's for another video. Um, it also helps with your natural killer cells and your neutrophils. So here are the vitamin A foods that you wanna lean into. Dark green leafy vegetables, spinach and charge, charge specifically. Um, then also sweet potatoes, carrots, squashes, pumpkins, um, liver if you like it, eggs, 
a lot you can do. I don't, I didn't add up all those foods, but that was five major food groups and you can implement these foods into your life right now. So use your fasting and then I want you to come over and let's use your, let's use your food when you do open up that eating window to really power up your immune system. Make sure you're not deficient in any of these nutrients so you have the best viral response possible. Okay, you trying to maximize your weight loss? Apple cider vinegar may be the key. Go check out this video where I show you exactly when, how, and why you wanna use it for weight loss. Apple cider vinegar changes your microbiome of your gut. This good bacteria is gonna help to bring your blood sugar down and make it so that you can switch over into the fat burning state.